Hey, I'm Renee, but you can call me Blade. And this is the Oh My God Show. And today we are going to be talking about uh, one of my favorite Bible stories. So I got baptized or got saved, as some people would say, when I was a kid. So because of that, I, I remember relating to the scriptures based on the Bible stories. The Bible stories were my thing. Like, what is genealogy? Like, <laughs> who is genealogist? So I used to like to skip the genealogies and read the Bible stories because, you know, the names are very difficult, still are um, difficult to pronounce. So, but I remember reading a story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the Bible. And I remember reading the verse that says that even if God does not deliver us, we are not going to bow. And that scripture really, you know, made an impact on my little heart at that time. And I, I started from that time in my life to learn to trust God in even when things are not going okay or when it seems as if God is not listening to me. You know, I have had to learn or when, you know, sometimes you feel like God is not answering your prayers or you ask for something and it's taking so long and you feel like, where is it? <laughs> I don't know. Where is it? So I, I remember being fascinated um, when I realized that these, these uh, boys that the Bible spoke about at the time were probably not much older than I was at the time. And they had such strong faith. They were in a different land. They were captives and they decided that even though they were living in a place where the other people worshipped idols and the king worshipped idols and not only did the king worship idols but the king also wanted everybody who even came to that place foreigners visitors every nation should come and bow down to his idols but those boys they stood their ground they stood in their faith because they believed in their heart that God was able to deliver them even from a fiery furnace but even if he chose not to deliver them in that moment, then they were still going to worship God. So when I heard, when I read that story all those years back, I never for, I've never forgotten it, and I really want to share it with you. Um, you might be a kid, or you might be a, a, a grown a grown adult, and you may feel like God has forgotten you, or God did not do what you wanted Him to do. But please remember that God is sovereign; He's bigger than us, and He does His thing in His time. So let's see uh, what happens in Daniel chapter 3. And so it's a scripture where uh, the king is called Nebuchadnezzar and he makes a, an image, right, of gold. A very tall, very, uh, I guess, glorious image of gold. And he uh, decides that, um, so he sets up this, he sets up this image and he commands that everybody should bow down and worship this image. You just need to bow and then you go your way, I guess. And um, so people, I guess they would do that because they know that if they do not, they would be thrown in the fire. So apparently some of the astrologers, um, they realized that there were some Jews, including, um, Dan, um, including Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who decided that they would not bow down to the image of the of that Nebuchadnezzar setup and you know in any culture it is not advisable or allowed or could be like you are signing your death warrant if you decide that you will disobey the king right so when the king found out um in in verse 12 uh in chapter in verse 12 of chapter 3 it says that but there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. So these, um, so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were also like officials, or we would say government officials. I'm not sure what level they were in the in in um in Nebuchadnezzar's um what do you call it cabinet, if I could say that. And obviously he was very upset because if they choose not to worship the idols that he said that they should worship, if they decide that they will not bow down to the image that he said that they should bow down. So he was very angry. So in verse 13, it says, so angry or furious, 
With rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So he decided that, <coughs> sorry, he has heard that they um, decided not to bow down to the image. So he called them um, to ask them, obviously, about it. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true? <laughs> So he wants to find out if it's true what the people have said to them that, listen, you did not um, worship. So he said, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zitar, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to deliver you from my hands? So he was giving them another chance to bow down before the image. Even though they initially refused, he was giving them another chance to disobey God. He was giving them another chance to, to disgrace themselves by not worshiping, by worshiping another idol. And you know, as Christians, we are only allowed to worship one God, and that's Jesus Christ. And we're not allowed to serve or acknowledge or, or worship any other God because in the eyes of Christ, it is seen as idolatry. So that is why they were not, they were, they were not able to accept to bow down before this God. And it says, um, but the king also was very, um, very proud in, in his own, you know, views and his own religious views and what he believed in because he's saying that I am the king. I have powers. I have the power to take your life right now because if you don't do what I say as the king, then I can throw you into this fire. And let me see, <laughs> let me see which God is going to deliver you out of the fire <laughs> because I can't see your God, but I can see this fire right here. Right, so Nebuchadnezzar was very adamant that he was not going to tolerate anybody disobeying his orders. So it says then, who, which God can take you out of this fire? Which God can deliver you from me? When I say that you should bow and you didn't bow, you think that you're going to go away scotch-free? No, 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 no. I am going to punish you. So he said, so Shadrach, in verse 16, he says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. So this is the, the, the verses that really stuck out to me since that time. So they were saying to the king that, listen, I know you have power. I know you have authority to do what you want to do. But the issue is that the God that we serve has the power to deliver us from your hands. Um, if he wants to deliver us, right? But, it's, but then they, they went on in verse 18, right? And says, but even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Sorry. So we see here where they are still showing respect to the authority of the land. You know, um, that's why we should respect our presidents, our prime ministers and those people. They still are giving reverence due to him. So they're, they're not calling him boy. They're not calling him any disgraceful name. They're still referring to him as your majesty. But they still are not allowed to disgrace the higher, the king of kings and the lord of lords that they serve. So, so these young boys are explaining to the king who has the power to take their physical life but not their spiritual life. And he, they said to him, listen, even if God does not, if he does not, we want you to know that your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. So even if God is not ready to deliver us now from this physical fire that you are about to throw us in, we are not willing to worship your God just the same. The Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude towards them changed. He ordered the furnace heated 
seven times hotter, hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So he got so mad, so angry, so upset with them that he decided to make the fire even hotter, right? So these men, they were still in their clothes, their normal clothes, their hats or what they call them, turbans. So these men wearing their robes, trousers, turbans and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. So they did throw them into the fire. The king command, the king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and these three men firmly tied fell into the burning furnace. So the men who, who, who threw them in the fire died because the heat, just the heat of the furnace was so hot because the soldiers did not go inside the fire, but they died. And these men were, were thrown into the fire, tied up. And um, then Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw in the fire, into the fire? They replied, certainly your majesty. And he said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, un unarmed. And the fourth looks like the son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the most high God, come out come here so shadrach meshach and abednego came out of the fire and the star and the satraps prefects governors and royal advisors crowded around them they saw that the fire had not armed their bodies nor was a hair of their head singed their robes were not scorched and there was no smell of fire on them then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble. For no other God can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence of Babylon. So we see here where the faithfulness of these young men and their their unyielding faith in God saved them and they were also promoted in the eyes in front of of men in in their jobs as well but um this story is important to us nowadays as well as you go to school you go to work and you have many opportunities to bow down to idols in different ways many many opportunities to deny Christ or to not speak up for what you believe because you don't want to look bad or you don't want to be left out or anything like that or you don't want to be cast in any furnace of that sort but those young men they were not afraid to lose their life for the sake of the gospel or for the sake of the God that they believed in and in the end it was the king himself who was this willing to persecute the people who did not speak against God because he saw that God has the power to deliver us from any fiery furnace that the enemy has planted or has set up for us. If you just believe in him, then he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above we can ever ask, think, or imagine. I am so excited to share this story with you. As I said, I used that scripture growing up especially when I was in high school, just trusting God and knowing that, listen, if I serve a God who is able to physically protect even from fire that we all know is, you know, able to destroy almost anything that it comes in contact with, then why should I be afraid? Why should I 
um, why should I worry when I have problems? Why should I worry when certain, you know, temptations come my way? God is able to give me a way of escape. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and remember to read the entire chapter for yourself. You can read in Daniel um, chapter 3, the entire chapter, because I started, I think, from verse 13. Uh, God bless you all. Thank you for watching the show. Take care of yourself. And I have been really sleepy, sleepy, sleepy these last few days of this whole quarantine situation. And I had to fight myself to do this video because I really, really want to sleep. And while I am talking to you now, the sleep left my body in Jesus' name. So it's good to push yourself even and to exercise. And um, yes, I need to catch up on my exercise as well, maybe tomorrow. But thank you so much. Take care. Do not allow your heart to get discouraged or distressed because of what's going on now. Entertain yourself and encourage yourself in the Lord. Rest as much as you can. And I will see you in the next video. So like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. I'm Blade and I'm cutting.